Hello and welcome to Stockwatch, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature, none of it is upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it is upon as any form of advice at all. It's just general in nature only. CSL, I want to go on to it. At the moment, we've got the big, big release for December for the plasma upgrade numbers and particularly around the overall plasma collection that goes on there. And plasma collection volumes at CSL were up about 21%. Now, collection volumes over the year are up a massive 31% and costs per litre are down 14% over the year to June 23. So put that in your calculator and work out the margins you're starting to see. Reported um, IG, so immunoglobulin revenue, 21% this calendar year. You look at 11% increase in um, immunoglobulin revenue as well. It shows you why CSL remains a lot of people's pick in the healthcare space. Now, the caveat there is that the overall space is not very big, so I understand that completely. But there is no doubt if you put discounted cash flows into it, CSL's you know, track record around research and development, you throw in their VIFOR portfolio they've just acquired out of Switzerland, and it's tough to make a case that CSL is not going to make what most people's case is, which is where CSL over the next two to three years punches through 330 bucks a share. Now, none of that's a recommendation, so I point that out very clearly. But overall, the upside risks are clearly positive phase three for the data for their overall CSL 11.12 project, better than expected cost efficiencies, which you're already seeing with cost per liter for things like plasma, better integration of VI4 overall, and then you also see an Aussie dollar that continues to help it from a tailwind perspective, considering that most of their earnings comes in USD, Euro, or Swiss francs, and bringing that back home also works in its favor. There are some issues, maybe that the currency does go against it. If you see a failure to improve immunoglobulin yields, which is a possibility considering someone like Baxter is finally getting its finger out and getting on with the job, taking away some of share. And then they've got specialty product headwinds. Overall, they've done quite well, but again, things like immunizations through the COVID period did them well, but now that's sort of catching a little bit of headwind. You may also see a bit of a moderation in demand. Overall, though, the product mix that come from CSL, the product direction it's going, it's market leading positions in Asia, the US and Europe is why CSL in my view remains an incredible, incredible player and why I'm not surprised to see continued double digit growth in its core businesses of the bearing and serious division, which is what you should expect into 2024 and beyond.